It is, of course, a very difficult question to ask how things began at the very beginning of the universe. It's very difficult to even know what the word beginning even means with respect to the universe. That any physicist, any biologist, any scientist, any reasonable person would accept. However, when you ask what's the alternative, if the alternative that's being offered to um, what physicists now talk about, a big, a big bang, a spontaneous um, uh, singularity which gave rise to the origin of the universe, if the alternative to that is a divine intelligence, a creator which would have to have been complicated, statistically improbable, the very kind of thing which scientific theories such as Darwin's exists to explain, then immediately we see that however difficult and apparently inadequate the theory of the physicists is, the theory of the theologians that the first cause was a complicated intelligence is even more difficult to accept. They're both difficult, but the theory of the cosmic intelligence is even worse. What Darwinism does is to raise our consciousness to the power of science to explain the existence of complex things and intelligences and creative intelligences are above all complex things, they're statistically improbable. Darwinism raises our consciousness to the power of science to explain how such entities, and the human brain is one, how such entities can come into existence from simple beginnings. However difficult those simple beginnings may be to accept, they are a whole lot easier to accept than complicated beginnings. Complicated things come into the universe late as a consequence of slow, gradual, incremental steps. God, if he exists, would have to be a very, very, very complicated thing indeed. So to postulate a God as the beginning of the universe, as the answer to the riddle of the first cause, is to shoot yourself in the conceptual foot because you are immediately postulating something far, far more complicated than that which you are trying to explain. Now, physicists cope with this problem in various ways, which may seem to you, they even seem to me, somewhat unconvincing. For example, they suggest that um, our universe is but one bubble in a foam of universes, the multiverse, and each bubble in the foam has a different set of laws and constants. And by the anthropic principle, we have to be, since we're here talking about it, we have to be in the kind of bubble with the kind of laws and constants which are capable of giving rise to the evolutionary process and therefore to creatures like us. That is one current physicist explanation for how we exist in the kind of universe that we, that we do. It doesn't sound so shatteringly convincing as, say, Darwin's own theory, which is self-evidently very convincing. Nevertheless, however unconvincing that may sound, it is many, many, many orders of magnitude more convincing than any theory that says complex intelligence was there right from the outset. If you, if you have problems seeing how matter could just come into existence, Try thinking about how complex intelligent matter or complex intelligent entities of any kind could suddenly spring into existence. It's many, many orders of magnitude harder to understand. Yeah.